Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, sequences and series, and we're going to introduce what these two vocab terms are. Um, in the next two lessons, we're going to get into each of our sequences and series in a little bit more depth, but in this lesson, the very first lesson, we're going to talk about the general introduction to what sequences and series are. So when a collection of objects is listed in a sequence, the collection is ordered so that it has a first term, a second term, a third term, and so on. So a sequence that we deal with on a daily basis or a weekly basis is sequences of days of the week or months of the year. You know, we have starting with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on and so forth. And the same goes with our months. They're a collection that's ordered um, in a certain sequence. Um, like for the months, it would be January usually starts off with number one. The second would be February, so on and so forth. Another way to think about sequence is in terms of a movie series and sequence. Um, you know, there's often times that we watch movies that have more than one movie to its overall um, series, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. In algebra, you can think of a sequence as a function whose domain is a set of consecutive integers. If your domain is not specified or given, it's understood that the domain starts with 1. The values in the range of the function are called the terms of the sequence. So given below, you have your domain, which is obviously your, x, um, your inputs, which are often notated as your x variable, and your range is often known as your y. And your um, domain, which we'll call n, is your relative positions of each term. Your range, those values that will be given to you, will be known as the terms of the sequence. That'll make a little bit more sense in a couple minutes when we start looking at uh, a couple examples. The first term of a sequence is notated as a sub 1. So this guy right here represents your first term of your sequence. Your a sub 1. Sub means that your drop is a smaller letter, letter, um, number to the bottom right, so sub 1. Your next term would then be uh, known as a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and, and so on. There's two types of sequences that we're going to talk about today. The first is called a finite sequence. Obviously, finite means there is an end. You have a limited number of terms that are given. In an infinite sequence, obviously, there is an end. Or I'm sorry, there is no end. And that's a sequence that continues without stopping. So how do those numbers look? What, what's the difference between a finite sequence and an infinite sequence? How do they look um, in, in terms of each other? So a finite sequence, for example, if I had 2, 4, 6, 8. In this example, 2, 4, 6, 8 is finite because it stops. Obviously, there's an end and it stops with 8. Infinite sequence using the same numbers would look something like this, where you have 2, 4, 6, 8, with the dots right behind it, meaning that it continues going in that pattern. So let's talk about example 1 together. In example 1, we want to write the terms of a sequence. So we want to write the first six terms of your given sequence. And you're given your sequence here. You're not given the actual terms itself, but you're given the equation that represents um, what those numbers will be. And so we need to find the first six terms for this. Okay, so obviously we know that we're going to be starting with our first term, which we know is going to be a sub 1. So a sub 1 means we're plugging in 1 into our equation over here to get what that first value is going to be. So a sub 1 represents my first term. If I plug 1 into my equation, I get 2 times 1 plus 1, which gives me 3. So a sub 1 equals 3 repre represents my first term. 
So my next term, my second term obviously is going to be represented as a sub 2. And that's what I'm going to go back to my equation. I'm going to plug 2 into my equation. So I get 2. My n, my sub n here represents the n I'm plugging in here. So my 2, I plug in where my n is, plus 1. So it gives me 4 plus 1, which gives me 5. So I know my second term, a sub 2, is 5. Moving on to the next one, a sub 3 is my, my third term. I'm plugging 3 in, so I get 2 times 3 plus 1. So a sub 3 is 6 plus 1, which gives me 7. So my third term is 7. My fourth term, I plug 4 in to my equation. 2 times 4 plus 1. 8 plus 1 gives me my fourth term equal to 9. A sub 5 is my fifth term. So if I plug that in, 2 times 5 plus 1 gives me my fifth term at 11. And my last because I'm looking for my first six terms, my next or my last term is going to be a sub 6. 2 times 6 plus 1 gives me my sixth term is 13. So that's my first six terms for this particular sequence. Okay, so why don't you guys take a minute? I want you guys to see if you can work on letter B by yourself. In the next video, we're going to start up. We're going to start with checking our answers to example 1, letter B.